Well, hello, hello, hello. We are trying a little something different tonight. We're tuning in from right now, Legacy of Love's YouTube. Um, Amber and I business soaring uh, where we do uh, annual retreats and uh, gonna start doing quarterly workshops. Um, we are going to get a YouTube page Create it soon, very soon, because we need that in our lives for soaring. So, sis. Good evening, good evening, good evening. Welcome, you guys, to Talk About It Tuesday. It's your girl, LaShawn and Amber, myself. Da, da, da. Breezy Butterfly, we are so excited that you are joining us this evening um, for Talk About It Tuesday. We help women who have experienced loss and trauma discover their personal love story through self-care, and we are so happy that you have joined us this evening. Um, if you are joining us right now, please, in the comment section below, um, please enter your city and state that you are joining from. We would love to connect with you. We just get entertained by where people are joining from. We, we really love to see it in the comments. <laughs> we think it's just exciting um, to find out where people um, are, are joining from. That is awesome to us. If you join later, you watch later, please hit hashtag replay. We also like to find out like who comes after the fact, mm -hmm. um, please get on and push hash, hashtag replay. If you um, are joining now via YouTube or later, please like and then share. Okay, so hit that arrow and share. Bless somebody else with this and then hit that button. Ding, 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 ding and subscribe also, okay? And we will, as my sister said, be um, creating a soaring um, YouTube page, but for right now, go ahead and subscribe to this. That way we'll have your information and then we can include you in our soaring page. So we are yeah. so super duper excited. Sis, do you wanna let them know what the topic for this evening is? Absolutely. So tonight's topic is psyched about self-care. It's a wrap. It's a wrap. It is like so crazy. Every single time um, we finish up one of these segments, doesn't it just seem like time has just flown by like super quick? Yes. It's like, you know, so that means we've done eight weeks. We have. Yeah, we've done eight weeks. It's crazy. It's crazy. Um, and it doesn't even seem like it. If we, you know what I mean? Like sometimes you, okay, so let's just talk about this real quick. You know, sometimes you work in the, the corporate world or the outside world or where, wherever you do for your nine to five in those days and weeks and months, just drag, you know, yes. you don't want to come. I mean, you know, you get in, even as, as positive as you are, sis, you, you get in those moods. I don't want to see these people or whatever. It happens. It has happened. It doesn't happen today because we're a different mindset, but I know for me, it has happened. Right. But this right here, what we got, I'm like, have we really been working together on this particular project for eight weeks? Yeah. I mean, it's and like passionate about. Yeah. yeah. But it feels so new. Like, even though, I mean, yo, we have our stuff, like we have our disagreements, we have our, our talks, but it's that we have it. And then we are able to keep it moving. So I'm just in awe of working with you, sis. I just had to put that out there in public land. Thank you for being you. Well, thank you. 
Thank you. I'm in awe. I'm always just so blessed at how God has um, blessed us. One of the things that we talk about, you know, we share a lot on here um, about our personal lives because mm-hmm. that's what um, God has tasked us to do is to get on here and, and share about our personal lives and mm-hmm. really just to get real with you guys and to show how we soar. That's what we do is we get on here and, and we let you guys see um, what really happens in our lives. And so one of the things that we talk about quite often is that actually my sister and I, we've known each other less than a year and mm-hmm. our, our business partnership and our sistership, it doesn't feel that way at all. And mm-hmm. so there's just such an anointing over us and that we're truly blessed, um, in our relationship and how we've grown together in such a short period of time. Um, and so, we really do care about one another. So when we get on here, what we do, we're really passionate about it. And to have um, been linked in the kingdom, we really always just give thanks, you know, Mm -hmm. on literally on a daily basis, we give thanks for how God has gifted us one another. And then not only that, like we get to walk in our purpose on purpose with purpose, like together. All of that. (laughs) What she said, what she said. (laughs) So we hope that um, you guys feel that and see that. Mm -hmm. Um, And so it's awesome that one of the things that we think is just amazing is we love everybody's participation. Mm -hmm. And so um, I don't know, do we have that special guest? Has that special guest joined us yet? See, that may be the problem because now we're on YouTube. I'm just confusing everybody. Okay. So, um. Hold on, let me see. Let me check the. Okay, so while my sister is looking at the different platforms that we're going um, live on this day, what I will share with you guys is that in this new next season for us as business partners, we you guys are going to see more of a presence on YouTube. We've we've been going live on Facebook. Um, you'll see us on Instagram. We're going to pop in on TikTok, you guys, because the Holy Spirit has placed in our hearts that we are going to be TikToking. Um, we're actually going to be doing a training because TikToking over 40 and fabulous, praise God. So you guys, um, we are just hitting the streets. Amen. We're hitting we the internet bring- streets, right? The internet the social media streets and bringing the word of God to um, the social media streets. So praise God that he is opening up um, the supernatural doors um, for us to just walk through and to give all glory to him. And so stay tuned for that. Um, Did you, did you find that special guest? I did. Okay. Let's just go, go about it. Um, Go with what we have on the agenda um, if she uh, pops up in the okay. YouTube chat, we will definitely address and revisit absolutely. the question. Absolutely, yeah. Absolutely. So one of the things that we do that we absolutely love is our guest participation. And so um, we have had a special guest that um, had presented us with an amazing question that we had addressed last segment. And that was our psyched about self-care practice versus applied. Um, And so that actually, that question really was what sparked and ignited us to have that whole segment be devoted to that question. So we really hope that you guys really know how much like we take what you guys say and we really meditate on that. So after we got that question in the chat, we had a whole business meeting and prayed about it. And out of that came a whole entire segment that you guys heard last week. Um, And so we really um, have those thought provoking questions. And as the Holy Spirit leads, we really meditate on that. And then we move forward and however the Holy Spirit leads us to move in that. So you guys really are a part of our lives and a part of this movement. for self-care, talk about it Tuesday in our ministry. So you guys are an integral part and we praise God for you guys all the time. We pray for you guys daily. Mm -hmm. Um, We talk about the things that you guys talk about on talk about it Tuesday. Um, So with that being said, psyched about self-care, it's a wrap. 
praise God, we are wrapping up another segment. Um, I know it's crazy and we absolutely love it. So we are psyched about wrapping up this segment regarding psychological self-care. And so what we've explored during these last few weeks are mental health and mindfulness. And so to kind of open things up, I'm just going to allow uh, my sister to introduce herself and talk a little bit about mindfulness and also her Monday morning motivational segment that she does and give you guys a little bit of information regarding some of the techniques that she does regarding her breathing techniques and how those techniques can help you improve mental health. Yes. So first of all, I am LaShawn Gunnels. I am your Reconnection Life Coach. I help those who are living with the loss of a loved one, a relationship, just something really traumatic to them that they lost, grow through the grief of that situation and step into their happiness with passion and on purpose. We go through all sorts of techniques. We get real with ourselves and we just do the heart work. It's not hard work but it's hard to work because we are going to make ourselves feel. Um, I have, a, as my sister just stated, I have a Monday morning motivational segment that I do. Um, it started actually years ago, years ago, um, when I noticed myself being just really, oh, it's Monday and I have to go to this job. And I was really just down about it. I was like, okay, if I'm feeling like that, I wonder how many, how many other people feel like that. And then I started looking things up. The, the um, highest suicide rates are on Mondays. Um, people are, you know, are, are ca- cause more accidents on Monday. I mean, it's just so many not great things that happen on a Monday. So I was like, okay, I can't be part of the problem. I can't sit up here and complain about it too. So I started Monday morning motivation. Um, I actually started that just because before I even became a coach. And then I, tu- I, I stopped for a while and came back to it as a certified life coach. I went ahead and started doing them. But what we do, we one of the first techniques that we practice and that we do every Monday is what I call breath work. And what it really is, is just taking that time out to be in the present. You do some deep breathing exercises, and then you allow yourself to be in the present. I ask you to close your eyes. I I hope and pray that you're able to get in the most relaxed state that you possibly can get into. And then we just sit and we be, and we allow ourselves to just be. We listen to the sounds around us. We just melt into it. And it's the most relaxing thing ever. I practice this all the time. I can be on conference calls. It's become such a way of life for me. I can be on conference calls and I'm doing my deep breathing and I'm just allowing myself to be. Now, don't get it twisted. I am paying attention. However, sometimes I just have to take a moment. (laughs) So that's who I am. Now I'm going to turn it over to my sister. She's going to give you some information on what she does and also another challenge that we had during this last four weeks. Yes. So I am Amber Thompson. I am a certified life enrichment director and I help women who have experienced trauma at the hands of the parents and who have decided to no longer live in pieces, but begin the journey of living in peace. And so if that's you, please connect with me because I would love to um, have a talk with you. Um, and see if you're an amazing fit for my coaching program. And so one of the things that we talked about um, during this amazing segment was digital detox. And so digital detox or kind of dumping all those things was our unplug to recharge challenge. And what we talked about was oftentimes we are on information overload We have iPads and laptops and tablets. Um, Now that we work remotely, many of us work remotely due to COVID-19 and the pandemic, um, we are just literally being kind of hit from all sides with everything, social media, you know, TikToking, Facebook, 
um, FaceTime, Instagram, YouTube, everything, because now it's become a way of life because that was our way of communication, especially when it was um, meant for us to be sheltering in place. So our um, Unplugged to Recharge Challenge was that we asked that for the first 15 minutes of your day or for a minimum of 15 minutes of your day that you unplug to recharge. So in my coaching model, what I do is I have what's called the first 15, where I encourage all of my participants in my eight-week eight week coaching program to unplug at the first part of their day, whether that's meditation, um, which my sister's meditation, I do that every single day. Um, it's wonderful. It's a wonderful way to just get in the presence of the Lord for me. Um, it just is a way for me to calm my mind, to just completely just shut out every single thing and find my center. Um, I put on my praise and worship. I actually listen to meditations. Um, you can find those on YouTube. Um, the other thing is, is that I tend to be a person that um, when stress is upon my body, I hold my breath. And so there's lots of people that think, oh, well, I'm not a person that's anxious. I'm not a person that deals with anxiety. And you stop and think about it. And through the course of me um, attending counseling and life coaching, I found that I actually do deal with challenges with stress and anxiety. And the way that it presents in my personal body is that I'm a shallow breather and I hold my breath. And so for me, um, utilizing my sister's breathing techniques helps me to breathe from my diaphragm, find my center, and then release those things that aren't serving me well, right? Because then I can get focused in my mind and go, what am I really even thinking about? And release those things and then just usher in the peace that passes all understanding. So the first 15 minutes of my day, that is how I do that. So with the Unplugged to Recharge Challenge, we hope and pray that you guys have been finding some differences in patterns of behavior. Um, and then also um, I have what's called Thriving Thursday and that's my segment that I do on Thursdays um, at 8.30 p.m. on my Facebook page. I will be um, utilizing my YouTube channel, yay! Um, to also be coming live to you guys and where I break down scripture. I also talk about the word because the word of God is very approachable. And so God is a relational God. And so that is also open to you guys. And then we also have talk about it Tuesday, which is every Tuesday with both LaShawn and I. So you guys have three opportunities to be able to see LaShawn and I motivational Monday with LaShawn at 7.30, 7.40 a.m. in the morning talk about it Tuesdays with us, 8.30 p.m. right here with both of us. Um, and then Thriving Thursday, breaking down scripture, getting wonderful tidbits and things to apply. We are not of the world, but we walk in the world and we have our sword to combat anything that comes for us. Praise God. Praise God. So I wanted to let you know, sis. And by the way, before I get let her, sis know this part, her Thriving Thursdays have been nothing but a blessing to me. I am not the biggest studier or reader. <laughs> <laughs> but she, first of all, introduced me to the Amplified Version of the Bible, which is amazing. I was a key, New King James girl. And so she introduced me to the Amplified Version. I'm just in love with it now. Uh, then she introduced me and taught how the Amplified Version is broken down, what it means in the brackets, you know, just and then she breaks it down even more even more, is that right? Even more plainer is, I don't even think that's correct English, but that's okay. It's just gooder and gooder. Since I'm already messing up in the English category, I'm just going to keep it going. It's just gooder and gooder every Thursday, y'all. So y'all really want to uh, join her group. And like she said, she's going to start coming on YouTube too. I really, I think I'm a, I'm a push and press that she come on YouTube live and just take that link and put it in the group. Yeah. So we're going to get YouTube popping, but Kim is here in the YouTube house. 
So Kim is who, uh, first of all, she's a great sister of mine. Like our girls grew up together, the bestest of friends, but just like kids do, they do their thing. They go their separate ways. So me and Kim, we let kids be kids and we still are cool. So um, Kim is the one who asked the question last week or two weeks ago about how do you apply self-care without people thinking you're selfish? Wouldn't it, did I add lip that right? Yeah, how do you address backlash regarding um, practicing self-care, which we thought was just an amazing thought-provoking question. So I'm, I'm so glad, welcome Kim, praise God for you. Yeah. Um, and as I was stating before, that um, we absolutely love audience participation and we really do meditate on these things. And it, it was something that, it was so thought provoking to us that we literally made it into a whole entire segment. Mm-hmm. Um, it was almost an hour long segment because the more we thought about it, we thought, you know what, self-care is actually largely misunderstood, which is something that causes a barrier. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, I love a play on words. And so we titled it practiced versus applied because one of the things that tends to typically happen is that people don't practice self-care. And so what ends up being the natural consequence and repercussion is that we become the walking wounded. So Mm -hmm. what's happening is that um, people think um, something like, oh, well, the reason why you're going out of the house is because you're trying to escape the house. Um, You're just going to go get your nails done. You're just going to go get your hair did, your wig flipped, you know, those different types of things. Um, It's just about massages and spa days when really that's actually a misconception. Mm -hmm. And that if you practice self-care daily, then that is actually health care. And so really what we did was last week, we did a recap on the fact that, um, first of all, um, be non-judgmental because a lot of people have a misconception and or and or a preconceived idea about what self-care is, right? Mm-hmm. And so, um, for example, I, I gave some examples. So some of the examples were this. I take 30 minutes per day to pamper myself because it makes me a better mother um, and wife or I journal daily to reduce the emotional stress in my life. This allows me to be more emotionally present with others. Or one day a week, I attend life coaching to address loss, grief, trauma from my past because I want to have a more successful marriage. And so sometimes when we ask questions, we gain understanding, we gain better understanding or a deeper understanding um, about what that person or the individual that you're talking to is really trying to elicit from you or us, right? So the misunderstanding is many people think, like I stated before, that self-care is about like escaping something or leaving this, especially if it's maybe between maybe a male or a female, Mm -hmm. um, there's there's a misunderstanding or misconception. And so when it's actually that the things that we have been discussing in this segment are about mindfulness. So for example, you know, my sister explaining that mindfulness is about getting present um, and and being, finding your center, um, Mm -hmm. which helps us with mental health, emotional health, psyched about self-care, psychological health. And so um, we talked about Monday morning motivational. You know, it's not like your Monday morning motivational. Um, A lot of our segments, Thriving Thursday with me, talk about it Tuesday. It's 15 to 20 minutes, you know, 15 to 20 minutes applied daily and you're taking care of yourself. It's exactly what it says, self-care. When you take care of yourself, then you can be a better person for other people. Mm -hmm. Um, It's it's not selfish, but what happens is um, my, my phrase that I say is, you take care of self so you don't have to deal with the ish, right? Mm. Um, you don't want to become the walking wounded. We need to take care of ourselves, especially as women. I always say this, men, we know you're on here. Bless you all. We love you. Um, but typically, LaShawn and I, 
um, our coaching is geared typically towards women. Um, we do love the men, praise God for you. Um, but typically women, we tend to be caregivers um, and we tend to love people. But what we need to remember is love yourself to the extent that you love others and more. Mm, that's so good. Okay. Um, my sister is always talking about put the oxygen on yourself first. When you get on an airplane, so you give yourself the oxygen first because you can't save somebody else when you're dead or you're dying, right? You can't do that. Um, when you're attempting to save someone, when you go and take a life-saving class, um, they will tell you, actually, if someone is struggling when you're trying to save them in the water, you should let them go. The body is a natural flotation device. You're actually not going to drown them. Okay. But a person that you're trying to save, if they're struggling, they will actually kill you. They can actually sink you. Okay. So that's the other thing. Um, the other thing that we've talked about is um, my, another part of mindfulness is getting into bed on time, little things, setting the atmosphere, um, self care Saturdays and Sundays. You know, LaShawn, talk about our stop and time out. You want to tell her a little bit about that, what we've talked yeah, about? So I'm going to, I'm going to um, address her, her statement. She said, yes, I'm getting beat up for standing on my, standing on my boundaries finally. So that's part of self-care. Assess. You definitely have to set boundaries to take care of yourself. If you don't set those boundaries, you'll be all over the place and you're not going to be good for yourself or anyone else. And I sure. think, and I'm not for sure who, who, who you're addressing here and that's none of my business, nor do I need to know that. But what needs to happen is a conversation needs to be had. You need mm -hmm. to let the people in your world know, because see, self-care is foreign to everybody. It was even foreign to us for real, for real. until we started really digging deep into it about, huh, wow, I wish I would have known this when the children were smaller, you know, I would have been a, a better mom than I think I was amazing, but I would have been even better because I would have been able to give them more of me, you know? So what needs to happen is you need to have that heart to heart with whomever, not in anger, you know, make sure it's a, it's a good, clear day. As a matter of fact, let it be a day that you guys are having the best time ever. And just say, you know what, let's have a conversation about how I'm going to and how, you know, how you've been looking at the way I'm taking care of myself as whatever they're looking at it as, whatever that negative cognition that they're viewing it as. When you, and then say, because this is what it is. I have to do these things for myself in order to be a better person for myself and for you. And for others, right? Yeah. Well, I mean, when I'm, when you're having that conversation with that one person, you want to center it around them a little bit, let them know I'm not just out here, you know, taking advantage of life and forgetting about you. I'm doing this for us, whether it's a child, a significant other, whomever you may be talking to, a sibling, a parent, grandparent, whatever, let them know you're doing it for both of you. So I wanted to address that. So true. And that's a wonderful lead in also to um, our, our next segment is emotional self-care. It is. And so, so Kim, you definitely want to join us uh, for the next four weeks. We will be talking about emotional self-care. Um, adult children can be the worst. She did say hers is the, her adult children. Um, she said I, she heard someone say, take part in your own rescue or prepare to drown. So you're right. Yeah. You have to take part in your own rescue. And if your adult children or anyone else for that matter can't understand that, you, it's okay. Let them, you know, like I said, when you're having a great time with them, let them know what you're doing, why you're doing what you're doing. If they can't accept it, you still have to stand your ground and keep the boundaries and make sure you continue to take care of yourself. Okay. So we love you, girl. You, you got this. I mean, and you know, I know, you know, I get it. <laughs> so you got this. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, stay, stay tuned and listen to the segments, go back on our group pages, because there's a lot of um, 
really helpful information that we've given in previous segments, Kim. Mm-hmm. The other thing too, is that we have an acronym called STOP, S-T-O-P. Yes, and we can go into that. The stressor, <laughs> triggers, observations, and then the P is for pause, which means you should just pause and then do an assessment of all the information that you've gathered. Um, so what is your body communicating to you? What is the, you know, when you're, when you're saying STOP, you know, the stressors, the triggers, the observations throughout that, um, assessment, when you pause, what is it that's been communicated? And then after that, we always say stop and then timeout. And then when we do the timeout, um, LaShawn ex- explain when we say timeout, because what we say is stop do this, you know, do the assessment, the stressors, triggers, observations, pause, and then take a timeout as appropriate. And then we talk about self-care Saturdays and Sundays. When we say take a timeout as appropriate, that can be something as simple as making sure that on your day job that you're taking your lunch break, step away from your job and actually take a lunch break, take your two 15 minute, you know, breaks or whatever. If that means that in your life, that you need to say, mom is taking a timeout. I'm shutting my phone off. I'm unplugging to recharge. Um, then that's what you're doing. Mm-hmm. Um, if that means that you're saying, you know what? The adult children are fine. They can take care of one another. If that means you get in your car and you drive away from your home and you go to the Sonic and you go to happy hour and get yourself a drink mm-hmm. and you turn your phone on mute and you just sit in the car and have a nice healthy beverage or whatever, then you do that. If that means that you don't cook and you just door dash dinner because you just need a mental health break, great, whatever. Mm-hmm. That's what we mean by taking a time out as appropriate. And then LaShawn, explain about self-care Saturdays and Sundays. Yeah, so self-care, so I've changed it a little bit for me, for for my, um, what's the word I'm looking at, for, for the way I defined it now. So because I've learned how to take care of me every day, Self-care Saturday and Sundays is kind of like my reward system. So it's more of that I get to really, you know, pamper myself. Whether that me, whether that means I actually go out and do something like the nails and toes or eyebrows or whatever, or I just take that hot, yummy bath with lots of bubbles and you know, fall asleep in the tub with candles around me, you know, or you know, um just just sit in self it doesn't always have to cost money but it's just my day of reflection so I actually do self-care Sundays Um, so my example of this past Sunday was um, I always have church service Uh, our church is online right now so I attend an amazing church service um, I actually wake up a little bit earlier now because it was hit on, it was placed on my heart. I'm getting too lazy and too comfortable. So I get up, get the shower going, actually put the hair on and some lashes and really get dressed all the way, even pants. Is, yes, I'm not wearing shorts. Uh, <laughs> get all the way dressed, including pants. And, um, and really enjoy church service. So then after church service, you know, um, I'll, you know, if it's not one o'clock, cause I am also, I'm also doing intermittent fasting. I've added that to taking care of myself. Right. And so I, I do my intermittent fast. I don't eat until one. So I may, uh, take a nap after church service, which is so super amazing to take naps, y'all. I mean, who would have thought naps could be so rejuvenating, but they are, they're amazing. I may take a nap. I may read. Um, this past Sunday, I took a nap. So then after the nap, got up, had lunch with my, well, yeah, lunch with my hubby. He fixed this magnificent brunch, y'all. Like the man put all his love into this meal and I forgot to post it, but I'm gonna post it. It's gonna be a late post because it was amazing. So had lunch with my hubby and then it was really breakfast because that's what he loves to cook, but whatever. Um, And then what else did I do? Like just had a full day of just enjoyment, relaxation. That was self-care Sunday. I didn't spend a dime on on that particular self-care Sunday, but I know um, it just started the week out 
amazingly. Like it was such an amazing week. I know a lot of people didn't have to do much yesterday, uh, MLK Day, but it still it just it just set the week up because even today, um, like I was telling my sis today, I go into the office. I haven't been in office since before Christmas, and everybody we have a huge project that we, a conversion that we're in the midst of, and every single person in my area. I mean, the stress and the tension was so tight and I was able to just do my breathing, be mindful and say the best prayer ever. And then you just saw things just like kind of relax and people started laughing and enjoying, you know, <laughs> enjoying the day, you know, because everywhere I was turning, everybody was talking, I was so stressed. I'm so stressed. It's just so much. And I mean, freaking out panic attacks, like on the horizon. It was like, what in the world? So just started praying. I did my breathing first and got into, do not allow that to come over here. Let me get centered and then prayed. And then just, I would speak something positive or something really kind or even something funny and things just got really, really calm. So I'm just telling you, you practice self-care. It it does. It just trickles upon everybody else around you and your world. It really does. People actually feel that energy and they're attracted to it. So I know that was a long, a long uh, <laughs> statement about my self-care Sunday, but I know my sis practices both days even. So you want to give us a little bit about what you do? You're muted, sis. You're muted. Sorry about that. I've been okay. coughing. So I muted myself. Um, it's contagious. You know, when you set the tone for things, then it, it becomes contagious. And yes, I do. I, I choose, it kind of varies, but I choose either Saturday or Sunday. So for example, this past weekend, I chose Saturday mm -hmm. and I got up and I did my um, deep breathing techniques. Mm -hmm. And then um, I exercise. Mm -hmm. um, I have a gazelle exercise machine. And then I did my toes. And um, it was just a relaxing day. And then um, one of the things that we always try to do is when we do the wrap up is we add an aging gracefully component to mm -hmm. um, our wrap up. And so during the wrap up, we always reflect on like what we've learned and done. And so one of the things that we do is we incorporate like any type of creativity, what we've learned. And so I love doing brain games and puzzles. And so what I did was um, I have mental brain games and, <laughs> and puzzles that are on my phone. And mm -hmm. so after like while my toes were drying, I was just sitting in my little comfy chair and I was doing um, some brain teaser puzzles, which is another way to age gracefully. But it's the other thing too, that it stimulates the brain. And so when you're stimulating the brain, it has those healthy endorphins and the good juices mm -hmm. that come out um, in your brain. And so I love doing puzzles. So it's healthy for me, but it's mentally, emotionally, psychologically, psychological self-care healthy for me at the same time. So it stretches and grows my brain. It helps me to age gracefully. And then it's just something fun because for me, it helps me to mentally just kind of disengage from what's going on. Now I know that for some people they're like, girl, you do what? And I'm like, I love doing puzzles. I love doing puzzles on my phone. Any of the kind of any of the regular things that are kind of going on in my life. For somebody else, it might be that they get out and take a walk or do something like that. So um, sis, what's something that you did that was kind of an out of the box thing that helped you to age a little more gracefully during this segment? I have no idea. I'm trying to, you know what? Okay, I can't remember if, was there something I did that you can remember that I did, sis? Well, I know that both of us, we've been attending the 22 days of prayer. And yes, absolutely. So I know that I've been posting 
my pictures of like my healthy smoothies. We've both been eating really healthy, which that also helps us to age gracefully. Yes. You know, I know that with you last night, you were making some salad. Okay. So let me, yeah. Okay. I was going to say that, but I didn't know if that went with this one, but it does. It does. So yeah. y'all, I'm in this program, you know, I'm always in something, right. But I'm in this program where it's <laughs> It's like, girl, what are you not in some days? But I'm in this program is it is really catered to self, right? And so there's five elements um, that we work on in this program. There's a physical element. There's a nutrition element. There's a, a what do they call it? Hard habit to break ele- element. Um, there's a, a mindfulness element. And then there's a journaling element. So so I am, I'm rock star with the journal, with the mindfulness, that's my jam, right? And then with the, even with the hard to break uh, element, I'm even, I can jam with that. My hard to break one is remembering to take my supplements. So I'm, I, I've changed my words instead of, I, I can't remember to take my supplements. I've changed my words to, I remember to take my supplements every single day and that's totally been working for me. Um, the nutrition hmm, and the movement, physical exercise. Oh, right. So what I have done is this thing I've been reading. I've, I've read a book is about how you stack your habits, how you stack habits to meet, to make good habits. So for each one of those, I made, you know, I started doing this habit stacking thing. So for the nutrition, my goal, my element, my nutrition element is to do the fasting, which is cool. uh, Drink a a smoothie every day. So from, from the time I wake up in the morning until 1 PM, it's just a liquid diet. That's my fast. So the smoothie is considered a liquid diet, part of that liquid diet and to drink my water when I first wake up and then eat at one o'clock. So last night I made my smoothie and I made my chicken salad last night, place it in the refrigerator. So today could be a more successful day with me meeting that particular element, me, me meeting that habit. Um, Last night, I put my bag together for work because I'm going back into the office now, right? So everything is right there. I laid out my clothes so I'm not rushing around looking for something to wear and all that. So that helped with, you know, with being prepared for the day, which is another stress reliever, which is another way of taking care of myself. I did everything. I did something for every last one of my elements except my physical (laughs) exercise, but listen to this. I'm just sharing with y'all. Um, I forgot my physical exercise, but I am, I am accountable to a group of people that I really consider like family now. And because on Tuesdays and Thursdays, we do this thing called walk time, talk time on clubhouse. I was like, Oh my gosh, I don't have anything to wear. Well, at work, I keep a gym bag and it's full of t-shirts why only t-shirts I have no idea but it has t-shirts in it so I was like okay let me put my t-shirt on and I don't have any gym shoes that's in this bag but it's a gym bag don't ask me well mostly because it's for yoga let me be real and yoga you do barefoot right so I was like okay you know what I've done worse without shoes so I went ahead and did cycling so I still got in my physical element this evening with my, cause I wore stretchy pants. Look at God. He let me wear stretchy pants to work, had a t-shirt on and my socks. And I was able to get my physical element in. So, you know, I mean, it's just, I know I went uh, again, probably digressed a little bit, but it's still about taking care of you, putting you first, putting the mask over your, over you first. So now I can come into this house and I can, Hey everyone, and be loving and sh- and fill it with love instead of coming in drained, not wanting to talk to anybody, snapping at people because I'm so tired or not. I hadn't taken care of myself, and I'm feeling all yucky. I don't. It's not that way. So that's how 
I've taken care of myself. And I think that was the question. Um, part of my aging gracefully, that was the question. <laughs> That's wonderful, sis. I'm like so proud of you because I mean, I just was able to be on the phone with you last night as you were preparing and, you know, you asked me to you know, be your accountability. I mean, I feel like we're one another's accountability partner oh, that's as well. Right. And, you know, we're, we're each other's cheerleader. Mm -hmm. um, and so I'm really very proud of us. One of the things that I've been saying is that um, this journey for me has felt different because it's an inside out journey, Ooh. which has been a very different type of journey yeah. than past journeys. And so um one of the things that we wanted to do before we wrap up tonight is um, just a sneak peek. We kind of talked about it before is that our next segment is emotional self-care. And so we are super, super duper excited about emotional self-care. Some of the topics for emotional self-care are navigating emotions, um, increasing empathy, managing stress more effectively, um, saying no. One of the parts of saying no is that um, helping people to understand how to accept your no the same way that they accept your yes. And so we're going to give you guys some tips and techniques about um, empowering yourself. The other thing too is as you grow and become a healthier version of self, um, that you need to be prepared to accept boundaries because mm -hmm. when you start setting boundaries um it can be difficult for people to accept the new you the renewed you right because as you're discovering your new renewed love story um because you're loving you in a different way um other people kind of are like who is this person right mm -hmm. so we are going to help you um discover that new love story um practicing self uh, self-compassion being aware of those emotional boundaries and being bold, being bold in that renewed yeah. you because it's a beautiful renewed you that you're going to be walking in. And then we're going to give some examples of emotional self-care because we always do that. And then of course, um, we always do more um, amazing aging gracefully tips in our wrap up as well. And so we're super duper excited about that. And then um, sis, do you want to talk a little bit about, um, what the new challenge is going to be about? Yes. Yeah, so our new challenge is really going to be about you get a journal. Um, we don't care if it's just a spiral notebook or loose leaf paper, get you something to write on. And when those, when emotions come up, no matter what the emotion is, no matter if it's, if it's a emotion that makes you feel on top of the world or if it's an emotion that makes you just feel so low, we want you to write that emotion down. And then we want you to understand and really sit in that emotion, see where it came from. And then if it's not that emotion that serves you greatly, see what it's going to take to get to the other side of it. If it's an emotion that is amazing to you and it's very, very servant of you, then see what it is that got you there so you can journal about that thing and revisit it as often as you need to or want to. So that's going to be our, our, the next 30 days. Yeah. Cause these are 30. Well, we come yes. to you once a week, but they're four weeks, but I think this one's even longer. That's going to be our challenge to you guys for this particular segment. How about that? Yes. And we're so excited because when you go on our pages, um, we, we, we um, do these challenges along with you. We don't ever ask you guys to do something that we're not doing. If you go on my personal page and my group page, you'll see pictures of the food that I'm eating. You'll see scriptures to go along with it. Um, I'm fasting. So you'll see a fast fact every single day that's on there. So go on there and be encouraged with the fast fact every single day. Um, there's smoothie recipes on my page. Mm -hmm. um, also, so with the new challenge, you can get on there and just stay tuned because I've always got something the Holy Spirit gives me um, during these challenges. So get on there because writing is my jam. Praise God. Mm -hmm, yes. Love it. That's the way that I release in the name of Jesus. So I'm super excited about it. Um, our motto together, LaShawn and I, is that um, the Holy Spirit told us when he placed us together that 
we are stronger together. The mm -hmm. word of God says we're two or more gathered. I'm even stronger in the midst. Praise mm -hmm. God. Hallelujah. Yeah. So the other thing is we always leave you guys with a, a reminder that um, there's a direct correlation between physical health and spiritual growth. So we give you guys these different tidbits and we always say it's one bite at a time. So even with regards to the foods and beverages that we put in our body, just take it one bite at a time. We fall off the wagon, we mess up, um, that's fine pick yourself back up, start again, next snack, next meal, next smoothie, mm -hmm. keep it pushing, right? That's okay, nice. so um, our word of encouragement, sis, do you want to tell them what our word of encouragement always is? Yes, our word of encouragement to you guys is just start somewhere. Don't make it hard. Don't sit there and, and, and come up with some elaborate plan just start somewhere. What's that one thing you want to start with? Think about it, write it down, make it plain, make it clear and do it. Do it. Yeah. Don't overthink it. I mean, we literally, we are very simple gals. Yes, we are. Yeah. We're super simple. And we really try to come at you guys like very, very simple all the time. So um, we always like to end with the word because the Lord is the word. He's the way, the truth and the life. So our scripture reference is John 6, 35. Jesus replied to them, I am the bread of life. The one who comes to me will never be hungry. And the one who believes in me as savior will never be thirsty for that one will be sustained spiritually. And that is such truth, you guys. Um, the pastor this evening at LaShawn's senior pastor and first lady at Alive Church out of Kansas City, Missouri, he said, the truth is a person. Mm -hmm. I said, come on, Jesus. I was like, let's get it. The truth mm -hmm. is a person. I said, I, I have, I'm gonna have to go back and like listen to this again because my mind is like so absolutely Blown. Blown. He said, Blown. there's a difference between facts and truth. And he's like, yeah. a lot of y'all think facts and truth are the same, but no. Fact is what's the situation right now. Oh, the situation. The fact is I have no money right now. The fact is this, that, whatever, whatever's going on right now. That's the fact. But the truth is the person. And what was the scripture that he used? Um, oh gosh, I've got it written in my notebook. Hold on. Let me let me look that up. I was actually. driving, but that part <laughs> it stuck with me. Y'all know I don't remember hardly nothing. But that part, I was like. Okay, because I, you know, I never, what is it? Galatians 3.29. Galatians 3.29. And yes. let me. And then um, I was just like so blown by the fact that um, just like you just now said about the, the truth is a person and you're like, you know, it might be a fact that, you know, right now my bank account looks like something, but Jehovah Jireh is my provider. That's the truth. Like, and I was like, come on, Jesus. So the truth is that, you know, we come to you guys every single week and um, there's a true anointing. We do this all for the glory of God. And we're so thankful that he allows us to do this. Like we've been gifted the opportunity to come and, and we are just so pleased that God um, uses us to bring mm -hmm talk about it Tuesday to this platform. And that is something that we never, ever take for granted. So we are so thankful that you guys take time out of your busy schedules to join us. Um, we thank you for your participation. We hope that you guys understand that we come from our heart um, and that we hear from the word. Um, we know the truth. We listen to the word. We are constantly seeking God's face. Um, you guys be in prayer for us. We are always constantly in prayer um, for you guys. And we are just so thankful for you guys. So um, join us. Uh, today is Tuesday. We have Thriving Thursday. And I have like an amazing word that the Lord gave me for this coming Thursday that I'm super duper excited about. Um, what's in a name? Praise God. We've been talking about what's in the name, Lord Jesus. So praise God. Um, 
<clears throat> what is in the name, the precious name of Jesus Christ. And then um, join us again for the following week for Monday Morning Motivational with my girl, LaShawn Gunnels, your reconnection life coach. And you can catch us on YouTube, Facebook, um, and then coming soon, Instagram and TikTok. So thank you guys so much. Praise God for you guys. Have a great, great night. And we'll see you next week.